we're going to keep this chat pretty informal, like some of the others uh, prior to us have been, and get your questions and everything ready, because we'll make sure to leave time for that towards the end. Uh, but you know, as we discussed outside, guys, basically, what we need to figure out is where do we go from where we are today, right? As an industry, have we done enough to really get consumers what they want, what they need, um, get them motivated? Jonathan, you want to take a stab so at that first? I think we are some way down the line, right? I think if you look at the market evolution, we're kind of, uh, you know, we're sort of juvenile, right? I think we went through our slightly tempestuous phase uh, until quite recently, and we're now growing up a little bit. So I think we're getting there. Uh, but the short answer is, no, we haven't done enough yet. What more would you want to do that you're not able to do or that you're not doing? So, the, it, you know, the context of my answer is, is as the ecosystem, right? Not as, yeah. uh, as a particular member Obviously. of it. But the, you know, I think that we, India has a huge opportunity in front of it. Yeah? I mean, we're, we're the third largest internet population on the planet today, right? And the entire ecosystem does not yet reflect that, uh, that opportunity. So I think a lot more can be done in terms of every part of the ecosystem, in terms of our own role as operators, in terms of product developers, in terms of entrepreneurs, VCs, angel investors, uh, and indeed uh, regulatory environments. Yeah. Molly, I mean, as, as one of the tech largest technology partners of the telcos, the guys who actually build the stuff consumers end up using, I mean, do you feel that where we are today, have you as a technology innovator gone far enough? Um, I would say no. Uh, I think if you look at the, <coughs> I still believe in the transformation capacity of uh, services on mobile uh, in uh, impacting people's lives. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs uh, and enterprises um, who want to capitalize on these opportunities. But today, do we have an ecosystem to nurture them? No. So from that standpoint, I would say I would agree with uh, Jonathan that we have a long way to go. And uh, from our standpoint, basically in that ecosystem, we can play a good role in enabling the operators to make it happen. So you know, as, as on mobile, what are some of the things you guys are now looking towards to increase that innovation or create that ecosystem or nurture startups or things along that sort? I mean, what you're saying you're not, not been able to do, what are you going to do to make that happen? I think the, if you look at the current model, um, actually the operator plays a central role in um, providing access to the networks, in providing the services, marketing and branding the services, and billing. Everything, I mean, they, they, uh, the operators play an end to end role, they play a very critical role today. But for us to move to the next level, an ecosystem will have to evolve, wherein there has to be uh, more openness on the, on the development side, uh, and on the monetization side, and on the marketing side. There has to be openness on all fronts. So from our standpoint, I mean, it is, a, it is a combination of, we cannot do it alone, right? I mean, it is, it is a combination of operators and, and the entire ecosystem will have to come together to make it happen. So that way, I mean, we are in discussions with the operators and I think Vodafone has started a very good initiator in creating the entire ecosystem. Probably Jonathan can add to it. Basically. So we are enabling the operators to make that happen. No, but a little bit of what you said sounds kind of like you're saying you want to go direct to consumer. No, no I'm not saying that. Uh, I think uh, from our standpoint, we, I mean, we have been working with operators for quite some time, and we believe that operators and desk can do a lot more to make the services more compelling. So that way, I mean, we will continue to work with the operators and leveraging all the assets. Uh, but besides operators, we are also starting to work with enterprises. That is one thing the initiative has started. At this point in time, we have decided not to go direct to consumer. Uh, that is on cover we are taking. So, so Jonathan, uh, you know, a lot of people, and, and I'm sure you hear this really often, accuse telcos of being the bottleneck, of actually being the roadblock rather than the enabler. I mean, this is nothing new. Mm -hmm. um, uh, innovators, entrepreneurs, vast companies have been saying this for, for years, even when the only vast that was offered was ringtones, they still accuse telcos of being the roadblock. So, I mean, how do you address that today? So, I think there, there are a couple of points, right? I, I think the first thing that we've done as Vodafone, actually, which is to take a, a fairly material uh, change to the way that we do business with partners. So we have our so-called Vodafone branded and operated services, which are services like the ones that Molly and OnMobile provide. Uh, and increasingly, we're seeing the over-the-top type of business model, the direct-to-consumer model. And I think you know, that's a, that's a really important change in the industry. So if you think, and it's a real wake-up call for everybody out there that's been providing VAS services. Because if you look at VAS services to date, the responsibility for branding, marketing, customer service, and distribution has been with the operator. If you look at the model that's succeeding around the world and is succeeding in India, 
um, then the, the producers of products and services have to create great branded experience. They have to think about what their brand stands for, what their proposition is, and it's a much more rounded marketing activity. And in order to enable that latter, uh, we changed our revenue share recently. And uh, you know, in fact, that was the last time we met, I think uh, about a year ago when I was trying to persuade the business to do that. I'm thankful that we have done that. And the, the, the growth in that direct-to-consumer market is huge. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to Vishal from uh, India Games uh, just last week. He's doing a million downloads a day in India um, of games. Right? The market here is huge. The, the issue has been the ability to monetize that. And I think with revenue share change and more open platforms that allow people to plug and play very quickly, that ecosystem can really thrive. So, so do you feel with the revenue share change, and, and I recall, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you announced something like actually only a 20% uh, or much smaller number that, that Vodafone yeah. would like to keep. Um, do you feel that that's enough to get more people on board, or is there more to be done beyond that? Is it, is it more than just revenue share? Is it, uh, is it other things, customer service, uh, access, preferential treatment? I don't know. Uh, well, I think distribution, so you have two elements, right? Historically, value-added services were, you know, the revenue share was large, taken by operators, because we were doing the job of network capability, plus distribution, marketing, customer service, branding. What I'm really doing is splitting those two things up, right? So if you want us to distribute your service, then we will take a larger revenue share, because our job is harder. If you want just to create, uh, use our network capabilities and billing APIs, then we'll take a much smaller revenue share much more in line, in fact, literally in line with the iTunes and Google Play model. And that business is really growing, but the onus is then on the third-party developer to really build a service that uh, is attractive, considers user experience, considers customer, and putting customer at the center is the new change. And I think that's actually the big challenge that's out there in the market. Okay, so, so clearly, you know, we've heard um, that telcos want growth, but, uh, and, and we keep hearing about off-deck, direct-to-consumer, uh, even this morning um, in, in Nandan's presentation, we were talking about alternative billing channels. I mean, are you guys thinking about sort of separating yourself or divorcing yourself away from telco billing and being completely reliant on telco billing? Um, I mean, again, it is based on the market. Basically. If you look at India, uh, operators, I mean, are the best channel for billing today, right? So uh, from that standpoint, and <coughs> also from the standpoint of today, operators have uh, a lot of consumer insights which can be used to, to develop and market the services. So from that standpoint, we believe that in many of the emerging markets, operators will continue to play a critical role in taking the service out to the market. But um, now in many other markets, basically we are using other uh, payment methods uh, for charging the consumers, yes. But, but India is one of the last very large countries where, like Jonathan said, the telco still plays the predominant billing sure. channel. Um, which direction do you see India going in? Are we still going to be, you know, do, do telcos have the opportunity to continue to own that space? Or do you think that's going to go away very soon? Uh, I would think with uh, the distribution and the relationship that the, the operators have with the consumers, um, they will continue to be dominant player in this, but I think it's a in, in a few years there will be alternate uh, payment mechanisms which will make the dominance of telco a bit lesser. Is what I would think. Okay. Um, what do you mean this actually? I mean, but on, on top of this, sort of while on the billing side it could be uh, the dominance could be lesser, but if you look at some of the key assets that the operators have, that is, they know a lot about the consumer, they have a distribution network, which are tremendous assets. So they can continue to leverage those assets to make the services compelling. So one of the accusations that regulators and consumers keep throwing around, you know, at both telcos and bus providers, um, is about a, a lack of transparency. And I think that's hit the industry a lot over the past year or year and a half or so, particularly. What's the road forward from here uh, in order to get over that? Well, I think the, you know, the, the regulatory changes and the requirements that I think the regulator correctly put on the industry um, have already been introduced by and large. Um, so I think, I think you're right to a certain extent. Historically, there were issues. I think those have largely been moved out of the system at this point. Uh, and I think the way forward is, is you know, having taken a fairly tough method to get everybody back in line, um, I think the way forward is now to allow customers uh, choice. And I think you know, one 
issue is if I really want a service and you know I've decided to buy the service and I've kind of clicked the yes button a couple of times then I, I you know I think I've kind of done my bit in terms of making sure the customer you shouldn't have to send service. a fax I don't think <laughs> at this point you should send a fax and so I think we need to be careful that we don't over uh, com, you know over make it too complex to sign into services because after all, this is a pretty interesting industry. I mean, it generates substantial amounts of revenue. The potential in India is huge to continue growing that revenue. And I think we need to get, take a careful view on that. Uh, Molly, uh, the general sense in the industry um, about vast players is, is changed quite a bit. I mean, do you believe that the industry and consumers are losing faith in vast companies and in what vast companies are doing? No, I think, uh, as I would agree with Jonathan, that is, over the last about a year or so, there have been a lot of progress in uh, bringing a lot more transparency um, and better communication and so on, basically. I think so, as an industry, I think we are moving in the right direction. And with all the, uh, I mean, with all the directives that have been implemented, and I think operators and us are going far beyond that to implement our own policies to ensure that the, the trust is not lost, actually. so. Uh, one good thing that is happening as a result of all this, I mean, in the past, I would say that there has not been, probably, I mean, um, I would say, uh, we may not have been, as an industry, I'm saying, we may not have been taking a very long-term view, that is, what is the we need to set up today so that, so that it is going to serve us well over the next two, three years. I think now with all this coming in, I think there is a much more long-term view of what we need to be setting up today, so that, uh, uh, so, but I think we have started thinking a lot more today than before is what I would say. Uh, Jonathan, okay. I, I, I mean, just one point to add to that. I think the, the consequence of these changes is that, you know, we and the industry are seeing services that customers actually want and value. And we're seeing the services that customers perhaps didn't want and value before. And they will disappear and die. And so, going back to my earlier point, the critical thinking is around customer experience, product design, UX and you know fantastic service and those are really healthy things and that will stand us in good stead okay i'm going to give you an opportunity to go first on this question molly what is it you know if you could have anything what do you want jonathan or what jonathan represents to do for you guys as technology companies trying to play in this space um <coughs> I think uh, Jonathan and Wonderful have articulated very well on what they should be doing to open up the ecosystem. Um, that is a very good move. I would uh, like that to become a reality. That is one. I mean, because uh, I think they have taken very good first steps, but I mean, it is some way to go before it becomes a, a reality. That is one thing I would say. And I would also want to see uh, a similar initiatives from other operators. And uh, also, in some cases, I mean, if you look at uh, if you look at a, a innovator, be it a small company or large enterprises, right? Today, it takes a lot of time for them to go and approach each and every operator and get things done. At least in, in the basic access and basic building, I believe that there has to be a cross-operator initiative, which makes it easy for an innovator to come and say that, hey, I would like to have this access, let's say, a voice code or SMS code at this price point at this revenue share, and they should be able to get very easily. I mean, today it takes, I would say, basically about 18 to 24 months before uh, uh, before they can get this done. It should be made a lot easier. Mm. And there has to be a cross operate initiative. So uh, two things I would say, one is, I mean, more operators should follow. Uh, and jo Jonathan and Vodafone should implement whatever has been articulated. And there has to be, this has to be followed in other operators. And there has to be a cross operate initiative to make it easy for uh, yeah. uh, uh, one window uh, uh, clearance for this. These are things I would have. What do you want the back to do for you, the tech guys? Um, be cool, right? Reinvent yourselves <laughs> a little bit. I think, um, you know, I, I really think India has huge opportunity. I think if you look at the industry, we're just seeing the beginning of that opportunity. But it requires a new type of thinking, right? It requires, you know, a skill set that's not there and that's not prevalent in the market. It needs a, you know, embracing entrepreneurialism. Um, and it needs thinking about design and stuff that we're not used to thinking about, right? As a culture, as a country, we have massive technical capability, but we have probably a paucity in, in UX thinking, in product um, development thinking. So IP 
So my own thoughts, my own thinking, rather than just uh, copy. Um, those are the two things that I think are the most important. But just to give a sense of hope, okay, which is, um, you know, we, we started this off-deck activity formally about four months ago, right? And I can tell you that today the off-deck revenue is greater than the on-deck revenue, right? So there are guys out there making serious amounts of money uh, by going direct to consumer, and that will only continue. And th this, this is within four months? Within four months, yeah. And what is, what is growing and what, is, what, what that does is it drives the whole ecosystem. Because what you get when you have a closed loop transaction is you have the opportunity to create advertising revenue. So because we're sharing more of the revenue back to the developer, the developers are then reinvesting in uh, marketing and distribution of their products through mobile advertising and other services. So the ecosystem is ripe for development. I would agree with Molly that I really hope that the other operators uh, follow our lead on that space. You, you think they will soon? It, you know, it takes a little time, right? There, there's a, you know, enlightenment comes in, uh, in various stages of, uh, of uh, development. Okay, well, one last question. Um, again, operators get accused very often of basically just selling bits and bytes. You think the way to reach to, quote unquote, the massification of data is to sell services or to continue selling bits and bytes plans? So I, I think the latent demand in the country for internet access is enormous. Uh, I think the, you know, the barrier to that has historically been price and a device that can access, right? And both of those two things are going away very shortly. So I, you know, I, think exp I think we need the market. One of the reasons we're doing this stuff, it's not completely altruistic, right? The, one of the reasons we're trying to develop the ecosystem a little bit is because we need locally developed services. Okay, and we've seen some of those today in the alpha sessions, and those are brilliant, but they're really just the beginning, okay, because you can only get so far into the internet penetration in the country with English language and global perspectives on things, right? We really need local stuff, and those services need to be, you know, recommended and uh, over the shoulder, as I call it, uh, viral services. When we get there, then I think um, consumers will grow dramatically. Okay. Molly, I mean, Jonathan's spoken about a lot of forward-looking, innovative things he wants to do. What are you guys going to do now to reinvent yourself going forward and to really arrive on the scene with the new data-enabled environment that we're going to see with consumers? So, <coughs> just go so, yeah. so uh, broadly, our plan now are twofold. One is that <coughs> uh, we have seen significant opportunities for the services that we already have deployed in India and many other markets. So we are capturing in Latin America, Africa, and so on. Basically, we are seeing significant opportunities there, and we are capitalizing on them. Um, the second one that we are doing is, again, um, I mean, we are working with some very large operators in the, in the US and, uh, and in Europe to help them compete and cope with the OTT players there. Okay, so uh, we have launched this with very large operators in the US and in Europe. And so what we intend to do is to, I mean, once I mean, we have um, seen some growth there. I mean, we intend to uh, deploy this in many other markets around the world, basically. So we do have a data play today. It's not that in India, I mean, we have not uh, gone big because of the nascency of the market. But outside of India, basically, we do have a fairly significant play. And over a period of time, we will get this to India and other, other emerging markets. Got it. Cool. Great. So we've got about uh, five and a half minutes left in the session, trying to get Nikhil back on time. Uh, so who's got questions for us? Yes, Vijay. Hi. Hi, this is Omoli, actually. I mean, uh, incredible white label telecom operator platform company for the world. The smartphone generation, what will you do for operator white label platform? Okay. So, uh, what, we are, what we are doing is, uh, again, as I said, uh, two things. One is we are looking at our current services, which are pretty popular, and we are seeing how it is possible for us to extend this to other channels. Okay. Uh, that is one thing that we are doing. Besides that, um, in uh, Western markets, uh, where the threat of the OTT players is more, I mean, it's, it's, it's more imminent and all the way, what we are, we are working with the operators to help them compete and cope with the OTT players, basically. So we have, we have what we call as the on-cloud suite of services, which we have actually launched in about last three months or so. Basically, we are seeing pretty good traction, basically. So that is how we are capturing the market that we are talking about. Oh, so you're saying that for internet, you can create white label services for telcos? That's right, yeah. That's what we're doing. I, I mean, like, what was that? So, for example, I mean, we have something on cloud where it is possible for, again, there's a client 
which is embedded in the in the handset distributed by the operator and uh, so it is possible for uh, two things one is on the it is possible for the users to create upload share content okay with anybody and this uses the phone book as the window for all the communication so this is one and the second one is we are also talking about how it is possible for us to help the operator in the on the on the video side for example i mean we have we are in the process of launching a solution which is a multi party video conferencing basically okay, which is uh, it is possible for you to go to the, the 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 phone book you can say that these are the four people i would like to have a conference with it establishes a video conference i mean right. immediately from the experience level. these are some of the things that we are doing on the communication side so this is Jonathan next. Uh, you've seen many developers and you have tens of, I would say, thousands of content providers on your network. Mm -hmm. Not every one of them is definitely playing a long-term play and that creates a nonsense value in the ecosystem which creates a disrespect to the customer acquiring and every other policy there. Why haven't telcos like yourself been harsh, extremely harsh, blacklisting, penalizing them yet? So I think the, the answer is that we are we are moving in that direction and probably have to a certain extent as a, you know and part of that has been driven by the regulatory uh, changes and I think that's a good thing the other way of answering that question is we you know we are in ourselves in a in a process of transition right the industry has grown organically okay and we've ended up with huge long tail of services right now in the classic internet model that works quite well right in the discoverability model in telco today, particularly for what I would call legacy value-added services, I'm not sure that's helpful. So one thing that I intend to do is to look at that long tail and make a cutoff point where there are customers attached. It, you know, given that the regulatory environment shows you services now that are successful and customers want and value and those that aren't. So there's a natural die-off that will happen anyhow. But I think also we should be investing deeper in the one or two or three big services that are white label that we can really drive in the business. But we should also allow a flourishing platform of, of great new services uh, that we don't have much control over. And to Morley's point earlier, right, in terms of time to market, you know, we're, we're working really hard on that. So the, the idea is that you are now, we, we, our turnaround time should be at two weeks, right, from start to uh, wanting to integrate our billing, for example, to going live. I was speaking to somebody outside who was, who was, who's done that in two months in a fairly manual process. And actually, although it sounds like a long time, in, in the context of 18 months or 24 months, that's actually <laughs> a material change. And my, my plan is to get that to two weeks. That's incredible. What you're talking is how you get the new developers in the new ecosystem sign up and so on. Mm. I was talking about what you have today. Ah. What you have today is pretty not so certifiedly good. Yeah, so that, that, so that, that, where are we cleaning up exercise of that? So it won't it, really, yeah, when yeah. you don't have people who are doing of activities which aren't acknowledged. Yeah, so, any, so the answer is we take a very dim view of anyone that's, uh, that is not adhering to the regulations. Everybody has to adhere to the regulations and our own requirements. And we will blacklist and take those guys off the system. And it, it, you know, it's kind of two strikes and you're out type of uh, position. But I really do believe that actually customers you know, can now vote, right? and customers are voting. Because what they're saying is, because I get a reminder saying I'm subscribed to this service, because I've actually had to properly opt into this service, then services that don't respect the customer and are dubious will die. Right? And that's a very healthy uh, situation. So I, my, my belief is that the market will do that uh, as well as us. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thanks, wait, wait, Just one thing I would like to add to it. I think, uh, we need to solve these problems systemically. I mean, it is not, it is, it, we cannot be relying on the goodness of. So, uh, we need to solve this problem systemically, and I, I believe that uh, I think many of the operators are moving in the direction of setting up systems and process in place to ensure this does not happen. So, I think that is a positive thing that I'm saying now. Hey, quick question. Uh, hi, my name is Karan, and, and this is sort of related to what Vijay already asked, and I'm going to ask it again because I wasn't quite satisfied with the answer. Um, most of the West, as you know, smartphone penetration is going crazy, has moved to the sort of, you know, clear data pipe, you know, the, the, the billing store, etc., etc., has moved to Google and Apple rather than the operator. 
Um, and given the way smartphone sales are going, that's going to happen in, in India as well. So is there a specific time frame? I know you've mentioned you know, slowly and slowly, but is there a specific time frame for moving to that 30% flat, get your app up there, we don't care what it is, uh, you know, publish rather than, than the current model? Because it seems that, like again, even in the West, what the operators have done is that essentially they've been jacking up data prices, data access prices to offset you know the the premium revenue that they got off services. So is there a, is there a plan in place for that? I mean, both of you guys so are opposite ends. I, I think firstly, uh, is that transition to credit card, debit card payment going to happen in India anytime soon? I'm not convinced. Right, we have a thriving e-commerce business which runs on cash on delivery primarily, for that for one you know, for a whole host of reasons. Um, so I d and you know you can't really argue. In in our own case, we have 1.4 million points of recharge in the country, right? I mean, it, it's difficult to replace or replicate that, that system. What I think is important is that we use that advantage to everybody's advantage. And the short answer to your question is, if you have an app and you want uh, a flat 70% revenue share, then that's the business that I launched four months ago. It's there today. That's why I'm telling you that the revenue from off-deck services is very, very large right now. So please see me afterwards and I'll get you connected to the uh, to the right person to give you that contract. Now, and also to just add to that, not only that, but if you are part of, you know, approaching 100 million people that have smartphone platforms, you do have access to the global Google Play Store and the global iOS store that have their presence in India, that have billing integration in India. BlackBerry has billing integration in India as well, so you have a credit card, you can pay for that. Right, yeah, I, I wasn't talking about myself, I was just generally asking what, you know, because telcos have been charging significant premium on that and it's good that Vodafone's gone that direction. But I'm assuming this is going to be an issue for many others as well. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. Uh, my question is <laughs> my question is for Jonathan. Uh, telco operators typically start innovation by first putting a business case of a profitable venture. Unlike entrepreneurs who would first start with a drive and a passion of an idea, and hopefully then say that okay, of this idea will emerge a business model and hence revenue and hence a profitability and hence evaluation. So in your entity, how do you manage this paradox? Uh, well, I think India is a bit unique on that front, and I'm not sure I agree with you that businesses uh, start with no revenue. And I think actually the most interesting thing about India is that you know it uh, if if my business doesn't have revenue in it, it's not a business, which is why I think we're quite different to the Valley and that kind of uh, that business model. Which actually, by the way, if you looked at the recent funding of one of the music streaming platforms in the Valley, two million French business, two million paying customers. So I think that entire model of build it and then monetize it later is a, is is dying across the world and is particularly uh, not going to happen in India. I think we'll go straight to the freemium and transactional model. But uh, to answer, sorry, sorry, sorry to disagree with you a little bit, but to answer your question, you know, we need, we can be innovative. Um, it's cumbersome uh, as a big business. Um, so we need to use third parties to be innovative for us. So the innovation that we drive is really allowing small companies and entrepreneurs to flourish um, and sort of borrowing their innovation. And that's the model that I think we should adopt. Uh, while we would disagree, I mean, I would also disagree on the thought, but assuming that you then open up to entrepreneurs and you open up to small as the way Vodafone is very rightly opened up, but then the question comes in terms of how you really manage smart and uh, ethical consumer experience because the moment you open up things, then what the third party is doing through your billing channels is not directly in your control. Well, it, it is At least to the time the transaction is happening. After the transaction, you can always block it, blacklist it, and so on and so forth. But while the transaction is being happening, at that point in time, it's well, not your control. No, it is in our control because it's on our platform. And, and indeed, the, you know, this, the experience, the handoff is to the, for the billing piece goes onto our platform. So it's control. entirely within our control. I would, uh, I would also say that you know, we can't police the internet, right? Uh, and really, this is the internet. It's, these are not services that I'm endorsing or branding. Uh, they're services that meet certain security requirements and follow strict customer experience guidelines in terms of billing. But I can't and, and shouldn't be in the position of choosing one service over another. That's again down to consumers to choose. And that's the beauty of, uh, of the model in my view. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Th uh, thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate the frankness in the conversation.